Welcome to Becoming Mind Strong, the official podcast of Mind Strong Fitness. My name is Rachel. I'm the owner and head coach of Mind Strong Fitness, and I am here to teach you truth. No more bullshit, no more point systems, no more shakes, no more raps. This is math and science, and we're going to learn how to do it together. Ready? Let's rock and roll. Welcome to episode 12 of Becoming Mind Strong, and today we're addressing one of the most frequently asked questions I get on social media. And that question is this, is intermittent fasting an effective tool for fat loss? And the answer is no. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. (laughs) Just kidding. There's obviously a much bigger discussion to have here, but we have to start that discussion by going back to a conversation we had in an earlier podcast. When we first talked about fat loss, we discussed that there is a clear distinction between eating for fat loss and eating eating healthy. Nutritious eating does not always equate to eating for fat loss. And the example we gave back then was this. If I figure out my numbers, my macros, my calories, whatever form of tracking you're doing, if I figure them out and I discover that I personally need to eat 1500 calories a day to lose fat, in theory, I could eat those 1500 calories a day in Krispy Kreme donuts and lose fat. Now, I say in theory because before I could actually show off my new in shape body, I would either get seriously sick or die because while eating for fat loss, while staying within my 1500 calorie range helped me hit my weight loss goals, I wasn't giving my body the micronutrients, the vitamins, the minerals, the nutrition that it needs to function at its best. The reason we're starting this conversation with a recap of that idea is this. Intermittent fasting is fantastic for your health. We, human beings, tend to eat too much food too often. We tend to put our digestive systems through the ringer. We tend to keep them working much harder than we need to. So when you intermittent fast and you give your body that break, one of the reasons people notice such a spike in their energy is that you're giving your body, you're giving your digestive system a break from all that overuse that it's used to. We're used to just pounding it into the ground, giving it too much food, too often, often processed food that it's not actually designed to process. And it's just nonstop. It never gets to go on a vacation and chill by the pool and relax for a little bit. But when we do intermittent fasting, we're suddenly giving it that break. We're finally letting it slow down and all that energy it was using can now go to other areas of our body, other areas of our life. And we experience the positive benefits of that. So when it comes to overall health, Intermittent fasting is fantastic for us. However, here's where we have to make that distinction. Fat loss is calories in versus calories out. Period. Hard stop. End of discussion. If you eat less calories than you burn in a day, you will lose fat. If you eat more, you will gain weight. That is the be-all, end-all magic pill when it comes to fat loss. It does not matter. Hear me now. It does not matter if you eat those calories in three square meals a day, in two big meals a day, in 15 little meals a day. It doesn't matter how many meals you eat. It does not matter what time of day you eat. It doesn't matter if you eat breakfast, if you skip breakfast, if you eat right before bed, if you choose not to eat after 8 p.m. or whatever the latest fat is telling you. Those things do not matter. When it comes to fat loss, it is calories in versus calories out. Eat less calories than you burn and you lose fat. So let's go back to our our Krispy Kreme example from earlier. You've done your numbers. You've figured out that that you have 1,500 calories a day to quote unquote spend. Those are your 1,500 calories. As long as you stay at 1,500 calories or under, you will lose fat. You've decided to give intermittent fasting a go. You've heard about the health benefits. You've heard about the increase in energy. You want to try it out. So you have your first meal of the day. And it's a big one because you know you're going to go quite a few hours without eating. So you decide to have a 900 calorie breakfast just to hold you over. Then you do your fasting for the day. Then at night, you go and you have another 900 calorie meal. Well, now you've just eaten 1800 calories. You're over what you need to lose fat. So even though you're intermittent fasting, even though you're doing good things for your overall health, you're not going to lose weight because you're still eating more calories than you burn in the day. Let's take another example. Let's say your number is still 1,500. You decide you don't want to do intermittent fasting. You like to eat too much. I'm that kind of person. 
Some days I accidentally fast because I get my head down on my computer and I forget to eat. But for the most part, the thought of going six hours or eight hours or more than an hour without eating sounds <laughs> terrible to me. I choose not to do it for the most part. So let's say you're of that thinking. You know you have 1,500 calories to spend. You do not want to intermittently fast. So you decide to have small little meals or small little snacks completely throughout the day. You decide to have tw break those 1,500 calories up into 12 meals a day. It doesn't matter how many meals it is. It could be two, it could be six, it could be 12. If at the end of the day you've, you've hit your 1,500 calorie goal, you will lose fat. Fat loss is calories in versus calories out. Intermittent fasting is great for your health, but at the end of the day, if the food you're eating in that day totals more than what you need to hit your goals, it is not going to work. Intermittent fasting is not a magic pill that suddenly, because you're not eating for hours in a day, you're going to magically watch the fat melt away. That's not how it works. Our bodies work according to math and science, and that math and science says eat less calories than you burn in a day. It is literally the only way to lose fat. Now, there's another discussion to be had here, and that's about mindset. And I want to be super clear about this. I am a fan of intermittent fasting if it works for you, right? This comes down to personal preference. We've already established that you don't need it to lose fat. But if you like it and it works for you, then go for it. What I'm about to say is not a set in stone truth with the capital T. This is my mindset around it and what I always like to caution people about. When you go into intermittent fasting... In my opinion, it is super important that you understand the mindset of why you're doing it. If you're doing it because you want to try and experiment, because you've heard about the health benefits, because you want to give your digestive system a break, because you want to see if it helps your energy, then go for it. But if you're going into it with this mindset of, well, the less I eat, the better that's going to be for me. As long as I'm fasting, I can't gain weight. That's a slippery slope. Right? The idea of, of not eating food in an attempt to lose weight to that extreme, the idea of fasting to lose weight, to me, is a very dangerous slippery slope. And that comes down to mindset. That comes down to that old limiting belief that food is bad, that I have an unhealthy relationship with food, that I can't control myself, that the only way to lose weight is to just not eat, to, to eat as very little as possible, which we've already discussed, is terrible for your metabolism. And again, this is not a set in stone rule or truth with a capital T. This is, this is a bigger mindset. I don't ever want to see people go into intermittent fasting because they think that food is bad for them, or they think that the key to this is to just not eat or to restrict. Because to me, that is a slippery slope down the hill of eating disorder. Doesn't mean that the intermittent fasting is going to lead to an eating disorder. It doesn't mean that intermittent fasting is something that you shouldn't do. It's just a precaution that I like to warn people, check where your head's at. Why are you doing this? Because at the end of the day, food is 1000% our fuel. We put gas or electricity in a car. We put calories in our body. Food is not evil. Food is not the bane of our existence. Food isn't food. Food. I mean, in some ways it's the reason we're overweight, but it's not the food itself. It's the relationship we have with it. It's the proportions that we've been eating. When you learn to get this stuff in check, it not only unleashes your, your life because you get your health in check, but it completely transforms your relationship with food. And then you can look forward to eating. And then you can look forward to even on those days where you go a little overboard, you can accept that that happens and you can get right back on. You learn to look forward to those meals because you understand that food is a beautiful thing that we need to function at our best. So I say that to say if you decide to give intermittent fasting a go, and if it interests you, I encourage you to try it, but understand first and foremost that your numbers still have to be in check. You still have to understand how many calories a day you need to be eating for your personal goals. Whether you're going to just track calories, whether you're going to track macros, it, that's a personal preference, but at the end of the day, it's always calories in versus calories out, whether you're doing it in three meals a day or you're doing it in 12. The second thing that we need to do is pause and breathe and check in with our mindset. Why am I doing this? If you're doing it because you're afraid to eat, if you're doing it because you feel like you lack the self-control to eat throughout the day, I do not suggest intermittent fasting as a tool because it is a slippery slope down a dangerous path. Instead, get some help. Learn how to track macros. Start by just tracking your food for five days, shining that light of awareness on your tendencies. 
but don't go into this with that mindset of the less I eat, the less danger I can get into, or the the more that I just stay away from it, the more I'll see results. That is not how we sustain this. That is how we yo-yo. That's how we starve ourselves until we cave and we binge and we start the cycle all over again. So is intermittent fasting an effective weight loss technique? Absolutely not. That's not the point of it. It can be used in conjunction with weight loss techniques, but it in and of itself is not a weight loss technique. Get your numbers in check, eat less calories than you burn. Once you have those things set up, then you can choose. Do you want to use those numbers and do intermittent fasting? Do you want to eat three meals a day? Do you want to eat 12 meals a day? Do you want to eat 20 little snacks a day? That part is personal preference, but at the end of the day, fat loss is calories in versus calories out, period, hard, stop. If you want to try intermittent fasting, go for it. Just take a second, check in with your mindset, understand why you're doing it, understand it is not necessary. It comes down to personal preference. To grab my free macro cheat sheet, visit bit.ly.com slash macro cheat sheet. B-I-T-L-Y dot com slash macro cheat sheet. 